Hey guys, welcome back. If you've been a longtime subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Dustin from Revere Glass, and today I'm gonna be making a beer mug with my friend Dobie Wan Glass. It was really fun making this beer glass, and I especially like the space tech and the handle. I'm gonna show you guys right now what this space tech looks like if it's filled up. Here's to another on the torch. May all of your glass blowing journeys be adventurous and full of success. I wanted to thank Gus Glass so much for coming out a couple weeks ago and demonstrating his amazing wigwag techniques. Gus is an old school player in the industry and it was an honor to host him. Thank you so much, Gus. Thank you to all the students that came here to support the class and to learn something. I know I had a great time and I hope you guys did too. Thank you, Gus, and thank you to the students. We can't do what we do without you guys' support, so thank you again. For those of you guys that are interested right now, we're offering a free trial for the school online, revereglass.com. Go ahead and sign up, you'll get a week for free. You can cancel anytime, try it out, see if you like it. There's tons of content, there's over 200 hours of classes and projects, plus there's community-based applications. I'd love to see you there and be part of your journey with glass. Go check out revereglass.com for the free trial. I wanna thank our sponsor, Mountain Glass Arts. They've been a huge longtime supporter of the glass pipe art industry and glass industry in general, and they've put a lot Lot of effort into education and helping you guys learn more about the right tools to get and what you need for your specific projects. So thank you so much Mountain Glass Arts. We have another special giveaway from Mountain Glass Arts this week as well. We're going to be giving away this frit tray and that same person will be winning these sculpting tools. And hey, if glass blowing doesn't work out, you could probably be a dentist with these. Make sure you guys stay tuned to the end of the video because I'll be giving away the pumpkins from the last video, plus these awesome diamond cheers that Mountain Glass Arts gave me to send to one of you guys. So check out the whole video, comment if you'd like to win one of these things. Please go check out my friend Dobie Wan's Instagram. It's at Dobie underscore Wan underscore glass. We'll put a link in the video description for you guys. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the studio. All right, you guys, welcome into the studio. And as I was saying, I have a special guest here. His name is Dobie Wan Glass. You can check that out on the link in the comments. And he came all the way from Montana to blow glass with me for a week. And we've made a bunch of projects for the school. And I'd love for you guys to check it out. Right now, there's a free trial on the school. If you sign up for the Veravente, you will get seven days for free, full access. You'll be able to see everything in the project section, uh, including some of the work that Alex and I did together. Um, so today, Alex is going to start off by making some space tech tubing. Yeah, that's right. Um, if you guys uh, know of space tech, it's typically uh, some fume and silver filings between two pieces of clear. And then you can shape that into whatever vessel you need. Um, looks like Dustin's starting out here on a piece of line tubing. He's going to make a wigwag ball. Yeah, it was really cool that you brought this line tubing down. Um, I love the color pattern, and so I'm going to just stretch this out, make a nice wigwag for the for the booty of this um, mug, and super excited to use it. And so for this project, I'm we're going to be making a. Uh, a mug, like a coffee mug or a beer stein, kind of a looking for a 16 ounce vessel. So I'm using a piece of 50 by 5 for my outer tube and a piece of 38 by 4 for the inner tube for my sleeve. Cool. And how much room do you think that leaves in between the two pieces? Um, a couple millimeters from my calculation. So the 50 by 5 should have an internal diameter of 40 millimeters. So uh, the smaller tube will, uh, the 38 will leave a millimeter on either side. So that's a good gap for um, some silver filings. So I'm just gonna pull this down, make a wigwag. Um, I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit more, kind of even everything out. I know you guys have seen me do tons of wigwags. So, you know, if you want more detailed instruction on wigwags, please feel free to check out the On The Torch videos. Many of them have wigwags in them, uh, especially the early ones were really based on fundamentals, so go ahead and check those out. And then if you want more in-depth stuff or closer connection, um, 
with me along your journey to glass with glass just go ahead and check out the website revereglass.com for the online school but uh, this tubing is I found it like the viscosity a little difficult like as I was turning it like it wasn't super even and I think that was because the viscosity between the black and the color was so different yeah that black is pretty stiff and some of those colors can be pretty soft um, right now I believe I'm doing the gold fuming and uh, for something like this um, I'm not just fuming the whole tube like you might for uh, you know a piece of regular piece of color prep or line tubing. I'm doing it in um, kind of odd angles and in splotches. So it's going to give kind of a more of a nebula kind of effect when uh, when it's the finished product. Yeah, I mean, I think it turned out really good, as you guys can see in the, the intro here. Um, yeah, I think this cup, the Space Tech with the dark beer behind it looks really, really cool. Yeah, and all the uh, techniques that are used in this have been uh, lessons that I've learned from Dustin from the videos or from the school. So we've got uh, line tubing, we've got a sleeved uh, piece of space tech fume prep, and then uh, I'm also going to be using um, some black, uh, galaxy black vac stack tubing later for the lip wrap and uh, to frame the wig wag. And then also we're using some encased opals and a chunk of solid cane that I also made with uh, the vacuum method. Cool. That's that's cool to hear. And speaking of all that stuff, like I'd love love for you to share with these guys on YouTube um, a little bit about your history. Like like what brought you into glass? You know what's it? What's your what's your story here? Sure. Yeah. I um, actually I I first got interested in glass back in high school in the late '90s. Um, I uh, met some guys in Corvallis, Oregon that, that uh, were into glass and um, I got to hang out in, in one of their studios a little bit and, and watch them work, which I had no idea how much was a novelty back at that time. Like it was really rare. People didn't often invite people into their studios and the studios weren't very common either. Super special, especially at that time. And I mean, are these people who, who anybody would know about now? Like, you know, who, who, st who was nice enough to let you into the studio at that time? Well, the, the specific person who let me in their studio was a gentleman named Guy Landers. Um, but my understanding is that he learned from uh, and worked with some of the other guys from that area at the time, which were guys like uh, Banjo and uh, Ryan Harris, AKA Buck Glass. Um, Buck uh, went to school at the same high school as I did, and I was a few years younger, so we never really hung out. But I knew uh, I knew who they were. These guys were really getting into glass uh, around that time, and I was just peripherally aware of kind of what was going on, but didn't really discover till a few years later just where they were taking it. Um, and then I started seeing these heady pieces in these stores, and I was like, I think I know who made that, you know, like. Um, these guys were all really creating a name for themselves even back then so yeah I mean um, if you guys haven't checked out Buck's work I mean or Banjo you guys should google those guys right now and uh, or look them up on Instagram those guys uh, have some of the most incredible work of, of anybody in the industry super talented people and uh, really really just inspirational to see what these guys pull out yeah absolutely so um, you know, back then I was kind of aware of that. I was really interested. It was it was a really cool scene. Like it was fascinating. The glass looked beautiful. Using these pipes was really cool. Um, you know, but personally though, I was a little bit distracted by other things at the time and uh, just wasn't as focused as I could have been on on pursuing art or anything. Um, so it was quite a while before I actually found my way to the torch. And um, so after some years of of difficulty with addiction and stuff, I uh, I got clean in 2016, and then um, you know within the first 10 months of that, I started finding these YouTube videos that Dustin was making at the time. So that was the on the torch season one, and uh, after watching some of those videos and some of the other stuff that was available on the internet, I thought that uh, maybe I should give it a shot. So I bought a Nortel or sorry, not a Nortel, a National uh, 6B bench torch and uh, used that for about 14 months and then I upgraded to a Lynx and a mid-range from Nortel and then um, a couple years ago I got 
my Mirage. I've been on the torch for five years now. So, I mean, uh, and you guys, are, I'm sure some of you guys are checking him out on Instagram right now. For five years, I think Alex has accomplished quite a bit, and it's super inspirational to see uh, how much progression can happen in five years now. Um, as you know, when I my first five years, I probably looked like some of your guys' first month because there was there was just no instruction, and I was trying to teach myself this medium that no one had done and make objects that didn't exist. So um, it's really cool to see how this newer generation is able to build off of uh, the guys who were there in the early 90s um, and mid 90s to, to kind of set up the foundation for this. Yeah, having the instructions has just been so great, instrumental for, uh, for me learning and everything. I didn't have to struggle with trying to figure things out on my own. It's just been uh, literally laid out in front of me and so all I had to do was practice. Yeah, and that's a key point is that practice, practice, practice. Pra practice is what will get you better. Practice is not going to make you perfect, but it's certainly going to get you better. The more you practice, the better you're going to get, the faster you're going to get. And it's okay to practice the same thing over and over again. That's what kind of builds skill. So um, building skill by making production, there's nothing wrong with that. And those are skills that you're going to be able to use in the future to make super heady stuff just because you've practiced making that simple stuff for so long. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned production, Dustin, because uh, that's actually what I've been focusing on the last couple of years, um, especially since I got the Mirage torch, which uh, allows you to melt uh, frit into pipes very effectively. Um, I My skill set has improved dramatically since I started doing all these production pipes and just making the same thing over and over. Um, you know, I. A lot of glass artists will tell you this, that have been on the torch a long time, is that the time that they spent making production early on allow them to really hone in those skills. You learn the material, you learn all these little moves, and I mean, after a while, you kind of realize, like, most things are a spoon pipe, like that shape, uh, you know, making the prep, shaping it with a taper, or blowing out a bubble of it, or both, you know, a combination of those things. That is all you're doing. You're making sections like that and you're piecing them together later. So if you can make a really good spoon pipe, chances are you can just apply that to other shapes and larger pieces and multiple piece, uh, multiple section pieces and stuff and, um, and you're off to a great start. Yeah, it's true. And that's why I really emphasize the fundamentals in you know the educational content that I put out because all of these fancy pieces can be made with the techniques that I've shared. You know, from basically the Maria and blowing things out and condensing them. Uh, that's the basis of blowing glass. And if you keep practicing those things, you can make whatever you imagine. Um, you just have to take the steps to do it, but you'll know and understand the steps when you understand the medium and the glass itself. Right on. So what do you got here, some galaxy tubing? Yeah, that is a, a piece of galaxy black line tubing so it's all uh, rods of galaxy black so you can't really tell that it's uh, line tubing from this angle but up close um, that galaxy is a sparkly black color and uh, up close you can really kind of see the, the lines between each rod um, are especially sparkly so for this particular piece I, I gave uh, that section that I pulled off of the bigger tube a good twist as you can now see uh, in the flame as it gets hot. So what that'll do when I use it for a lip wrap or another section that's going to be expanded a little bit, um, that'll keep it nice and consistent um, with those spiral lines around instead of stretching out, um, you know, the individual, like the lengthwise rods from a vac stack. So now I'm taking that piece of line tubing and I'm attaching some to a piece of 38 by four. And this is going to be for the top of the mug. Um, this will end up being the lip wrap. And that section of 38 by 4 is what I'm going to use to, uh, to expand. That'll be something I remove later with a saw. Um, but I'll need that much material so that I can expand the whole vessel out to 75 millimeters. So you're going to expand this, this lip wrap ahead of time and then attach it to the cup? A little bit. I think it's gonna be uh, just a little bit. I might, um, 
I think I'm just gonna use my jacks and make that just a straight piece from where it's attached to the 38 by four. So it's probably gonna be about 17 to 20 millimeters mm -hmm. uh, at the attachment point. Um, I'm curious, what is, what's it like living in Montana? Like how's the glass scene over there? And you know, do you, do you have a shop with a lot of people? Is there a lot of glass blowers? Um, you know, are any of you guys from Montana? If you're from Montana, you know, put something in the comments. Let us know that you're from Montana and you're from Big Sky Country. Big Sky Country indeed. Yeah, a lot of open space. Uh, myself, I live in uh, Helena, Montana, which is the state capital, but there's not a lot going on there. Um, I'm, as far as I know, the only glass blower there. Um, there's a couple guys that I've talked to in the last couple years that uh, have talked about setting up a studio. So hopefully they have. If any of you guys are watching this, hit me up again because uh, I'd love to know how you're doing and maybe collab since I got a second spot in my shop. Um, but that being said, I, I've been working in my own shop at my own home uh, pretty much by myself the whole five years I've been blowing glass. Um, there is a decent glass blowing scene in Montana mostly in uh, Missoula and Bozeman. And there's a lot of really talented guys uh, in that group. Um, so y'all should check out some Montana glass blowers. Just uh, search the hashtag uh, Montana glass. I think you should come up with some, a few things. So it looks like you switched torches, right? We just, oh yes. So you're on, you're on my torch now for a second. Absolutely. So I've got my sleeved section of uh, fume prep on the left there. And I'm using Dustin's torch because I needed to use his L marver for this uh, shaping here. And also, uh, this is the first time I got to use a Delta Mag torch. So I'm gonna be using the big flame on this occasionally to uh, shape this thing. what do you think of that, the big flame and the Delta Mag situation? I think it worked really well for this application. Um, I was able to heat a lot more material kind of all at once, so mm -hmm. I got more even even shaping going on. Um, it was a little bit warm at first, but I think you helped me out and threw a blast shield mm -hmm. on there for me, so mm -hmm. I was able to keep my face from getting too, uh, too warm. But uh, after that, it was nice. It was uh, really cool to work on that torch. I've seen that torch in many a video the whole, whole time I've been learning, so to sit at it and work was really a treat. Oh, it was a pleasure to watch you work on the torch and uh, it was cool to see how excited you were to be in the Bay Area and be in the studio. What's it been to, What's it been like to be in the Bay Area for a week? I mean, is it a lot like Montana or is, there, is it different? Oh, it's, it's quite different. It's definitely a little more humid. I noticed that right off the bat. But, um, but yeah, no, the weather here is typically beautiful. It was a beautiful day today. I went over to San Francisco and we walked around in Golden Gate Park, walked up uh, Haight Street to the Haight-Ashbury area, and then went over and uh, took some pictures by the Golden Gate Bridge, and, um, and then uh, drove back along the bay, and then before we took the Bay Bridge back over. So that was really cool. This is my first time in California, and uh, that was almost as much a treat as being able to work in the shop and collab with us. So it's just been a good trip all around, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I spent a day in Los Angeles uh, on the way here from Tucson, where I visited my mom for a few days. So this has been a really, really awesome little road trip that we've taken uh, now that we're uh, feeling better about traveling. Yeah, it's been a crazy year and a half for two years for everybody, I know. And so it's, it's really cool to kind of see some friends and to you know open up the studio a little bit for some collaborations. Um, and I know the world is still weird and everyone's life is all messed up, but um, it's kind of cool to get back into the studio and, um, you know, work together. You know, one thing that Alex pointed out, he's been, he's been a um, student of the online school since almost the beginning, well, about a year and a half ago, um, is that because my torch is, is a Delta Mag, it's sometimes difficult to compare the size of what I'm making with the torch because, you know, in proportion to a Mirage or, or a Delta Elite, what I would be making would look big, but because my my torch face is large and my torch barrel is large, things um, can appear a little smaller. Um, but I just want to point out that what this piece that Alex is working on right here is quite big. 
Uh, this is a, a big, heavy piece of glass, and uh, he's just kind of rolling through it, uh, literally with those rollers. Mm. There's my dad joke for you guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, what's it? What, is this like a scale that you normally work at, or is this bigger, or what do you what do you think? Um, I wouldn't say normally. I've I've been making mugs like this. I've probably made less than 20 total. Um, and recently, I've just been starting with a stock piece of 75 by five and putting a, re a wig wag in the bottom of it. And and that's been, that, those look really clean, uh, you know, just leaving them clear like that. Um, but I have made a few mugs like this uh, before. I've probably made about uh, eight to 10 of these ones in particular. And it is heavy, There's, it's a big piece of glass. I'm blowing it out to uh, about 75 millimeters. Um, it started as an eight inch piece of 50 mil, which was about, I think, nine millimeters thick after the sleeve. Um, so it's it's a big chunk of glass. Uh, we'll have to weigh it and, and put that in the notes or something to let you guys know just how heavy this came out. Um, but yeah, so as you can see there, I'm taking in the other half of that uh, black tubing that I that I twisted up and applying it to the bottom of, of this mug. Um, and I'm going to use that to frame the wigwag that Justin made for the piece. Yeah, that's going to be cool um, to get that wigwag slapped in on that booty of that piece and kind of um, make it flat so you can see that pattern come to life. Um, I always really enjoy blowing that out and um, getting those patterns in there. Oh, also I should mention that um, for a piece like this, it, it would be quite difficult to hold this freehand. So anybody that makes something on this scale and is just holding it freehand the whole time, I applaud you. That takes some real forearm strength, you know. Um, but typically I use these rollers and uh, when I've got a handle on the other side of it or a punty, it's, it's pretty easy, but um, your arm will get tired. So I tend to hang a counterweight um, behind, uh, you know, to the left of the second roller. So the, to the left of my hand there, that roller, on the other side of that, I would hang a weight on the end of that to kind of balance the piece. So um, heavy enough that if I were to lift my hand off of it, it wouldn't fall down. So um, yeah. Just whatever metal you have laying around that you can hang on the end of that tube is, is uh, good to go. Um, and that'll really take a lot of strain off your hand and your wrist for having to hold that, uh, hold that weight. All right, so we're just blowing this out, evening this out and getting ready to shape up that bottom. Maybe make that a little bit thicker and uh, flatten it out. You know, we edited this video down, but I really took my time uh, getting this wigwag ball melted in because it's it the the wigwag itself is mostly black, and the the color tubing that we use to frame it is also black. So these are very stiff sections um, compared to the clear for sure. So I really took my time to you know slowly melt that in. Uh, take it out of the flame, wait, you know, a decent amount of time before I, I blew it out and uh, just, you know, do that very slowly until it gets to the shape you want. Because I really don't want the bottom, I want the bottom to be thicker than the sides, if at all possible. Definitely not thinner. So I'm just working it really slowly to get that to the, to the right shape and thickness and uh, and when I'm ready, I'm going to flatten it. Here we go. So just put this on the marver, turn, and Alex is uh, holding the end with his blow tube to keep the air in there. And so he can control the level of indent that he's going to put on and just put it on and turn it just a little bit. Yeah, I'm not really, I'm not blowing, but I'm, I'm trying to keep any air from escaping. So, um, so that doesn't uh, compress too much. So just gonna go heat it up and then remove any marks that were made on the marver and go back in and kind of <clears throat> push that again. And I think at this point, it's I've even got it a little bit concave, uh, the bottom of that. Um, I really like the look of, a, of the concave bottom of a bottle, kind of like a champagne bottle, but less, less dramatic. Um, 
It also, I think, gives the bottle a little more stability because that, that ring that it sits on, uh, you can get that really flat, whereas if the bottom was just really, like you tried to get it exactly flat with the Marver, um, that might, uh, you know, it might not work quite as well. I found that a little concave bottom really helps you get that, get it to sit flat. Yeah, um, it's, it's definitely um, cool to see different people work and shaping techniques. Um, I also like the concave bottom when I can put it in, in pieces as well. Uh, if you guys are interested, Emily Marie Glass, who taught a fantastic workshop at Revere Glass online, also made a concave bottom on a wine bottle uh, decanter. It was beautiful. You can check that out. Right now, I'm just prepping up the handle, you guys, and I wanted to leave on a kind of a thick, beefy handle. so. Um, that way it would be substantial to the piece and fit naturally. So I'm gonna make kind of a squared off handle, flatten both ends of this rod, and then put opals in between uh, the rod and the, the mug. And that way it would just kind of create a cool, big ass handle. Yeah, the, I like this aesthetic a lot. Um, in the past, I have just made a, uh, well, for the fume ones, I made a twisty fume cane. And for the other ones, I would use, um, I would collapse a tube around some frit, and the, I would choose the colors of frit that matched the line, the line tube section that I would use for the wigwag. And uh, I would just make a longer cane and bend both ends so it was just kind of a, a U-shape uh, handle, you know. Um, and that, you know, honestly, it's, it's kind of hard to keep kind of a thicker cane to retain its uh, consistent thickness around a, a bend like that. Um, so you might see on my Instagram, some of the earlier ones, uh, it, you know, it could have been, it could have been more consistent throughout and the handles could have been thicker themselves. So we're really trying to go for a nice, solid, you know, beefy aesthetic on this one because the mug itself is pretty heavy. Yeah, so here you guys can see I'm just, squaring off an opal. I had an opal uh, that Alex brought that was already in case, so I put that in the kiln and then added clear to either side and made that into a cylinder. So I'm basically making three different cylinders, one big cylinder for the handle and then two little cylinders for the connection points. And now I'm gonna attach my uh, punty here. It gives me some you know, ability to shape this. It'll be on access. And uh, then I'll get, get ready to set this up to attach it. So I'm going to measure my pieces, make sure that they're all the right length, and I'm going to then attach my two cross sections so that it's all set up and ready to go. I'm going to melt these in really good and make that super fluid because it's going to be one important structurally and two visually. So here I go with uh, adding a bridge on and this is going to allow me to really melt this in really nicely and then I'll attach my second one. I'll again melt it in and get that nice and straight where I want it using a bridge to assist in the melting of this because I don't want this to go off center or anything to warp. Uh, it'd be really noticeable if it, if it did. And in the background there, you guys saw me taking notes for something and um, you know I can't speak to what I was writing at the exact time, but I will say that uh, I find taking notes and uh, especially making a list if you're working on a bigger piece or even just trying to set up some some production for the day, making lists has been super useful for me because I start out my day, I have an idea what I want to work on, I write it all down, and then uh, I don't forget the first thing that I thought of because I'm focused on the last, you know. Um, I know myself well enough to know that that's just something I need to do. So I'm going to try to set this up so that the edge of the handle touches the ground to add more stability. So that's why I was kind of lining it up there. And then we got Alex over here heating up the piece in the Bunsen, which is just slightly out of the frame. And then I have my links and Mirage. We're going to put this on the Marver and then attach. So we're going to heat it up and then heat up both sides making sure that's nice and hot. And then we're gonna push. And as we do this, it cracks on the bottom. It's hard for you guys to see this right now, but Alex thinks he knows why it cracked. That's right. I, I believe that um, 
We had that problem because we set the piece down on a marver that was kind of cold, or at least it was close to room temperature. Um, now, I hadn't thought of this beforehand because at home I typically do this kind of assembly on, on a marver that's sitting on top of my kiln. So that, that marver pad is probably close to eight or 900 degrees uh, right off the bat. And so while just setting the mug on the marver itself wouldn't have done anything, um, prob or probably wouldn't, it, you know, the, the thermal shock of the hot handle going on and the cooling of the bottom from sitting on the marver is what I think caused the crack. Yeah, and you can see me trying to melt this in, uh, melt the handle in, and now I'm just holding it under the Bunsen because that crack has really started to move up the piece, and it actually moves up all the way through the lip wrap from the very base, mean crack, all the way up. You can see it on the left side of the screen there, it's all the way up. So what ends up happening is that this Bunsen wasn't strong enough and the Nikwala couldn't hold this much weight so far off with that much weight off center with the handle. So I actually ended up moving this to my lathe and I put three Bunsens on it and I slowly heated this thing back up and chased that crack all the way through and I got the crack out. And it definitely took a lot of focus and concentration but because that's a really mean crack yeah you can see it right there yep but you can see me chasing it down and i'm starting to get it because you can see on the bottom it's 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 kind of a, gone away already so i'm going to move this to my lathe now i wish i had a camera set up on my lathe but we were using all five cameras for uh three over my bench and two over alex's so that we could film this video so imagine me holding this on the lathe kind of heating this up slowly and chasing that crack up um, you know, you saw that happen. Alex thought it was a goner. Yeah, absolutely. That's not something I would have been able to repair at my home studio because uh, I don't have the Bunsen's and I don't have the lathe to hold it over them while I'm uh, slowly approaching it. Um, but I'm really grateful that I was here for that. And, um, and we left it in to share with you guys uh, how to avoid that. Because if you guys try this at home, I really don't want that happening to you. So, uh, you know, like we said earlier, uh, the reason we think it happened is because the Marver cooled it down too much. So you can solve that problem by taking your mini torch and just heating the section of your Marver that you're gonna set the thing down. It doesn't need to be glowing or anything, but just make sure that it's closer to the glass temperature so it's not gonna suck that heat out. So here, I'm just gonna take this to the cold working room and saw off the lip. These saws are a great tool to have around. I have one myself, the same model, the uh, Gemini Revolution XT, and uh, I've found it very helpful. You can use a saw like this to cut perk slots and, um, and especially, uh, you know, cut the top off of these kind of drinking vessels. And I also use it to remove the handle off of mini tubes sometimes when I have a worked mini tube mouthpiece, and you don't want to ruin that by disconnecting your handle with a flame. So after we finish polishing this up, just a little bit on one of my uh, finer wheels and bring that, that roughness down. And then I'm gonna put this in the kiln and basically just go over that lip with a to torch to bring down um, that roughness of it. I can even heat this up in the kiln or I could take it off out of the kiln and heat it up at the bench, uh, whatever seems the best, but just a, a slight heat to make sure that that's nice and melted in. It was really super fun making this piece and challenging to repair that crack. You guys can see the space tech covering the whole piece. And of course that twisted handle, which is kind of spacey in, in itself. Um, you see that wig wag. Yeah, this piece came out great. Um, I'm really happy with the way this uh, fume prep uh, comes out. It looks like galaxies or, or nebulas or just like, I don't know. You guys like space tech, it's, it looks awesome. And um, uh, besides the piece being awesome, it was great having you in the studio and you coming all this way to work with me. It was an honor and I'm super happy that you came and thanks for making this piece and sharing it with you guys. And of course, this piece is for one of you guys, so make sure you comment in the video. Um, let us know what you think, let us know where you are, what you're up to with glass, and uh, we'll send this out to you. You guys can enjoy this at home. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Welcome back, you guys. 
Thank you so much for checking out that demo. I had so much fun working with Dobie Wan Glass. It was such a pleasure having him here at the studio for four or five days. We got a lot done and we created some content for the online school as well. So make sure you check out this video plus the classes on the online school. As I mentioned earlier, there's a free trial. Go ahead and check that out. Some of those videos are already accessible and you'll be able to see them for free. I know that you guys have asked some questions. So the first question is from Stony Chicken. Stony Chicken says, when are we gonna get down on a chain demo? Well, Stony Chicken, anytime you want. If you guys, if Stony Chicken or any of you guys are interested in collaborating or teaching, send me a message at revereglass.com using the chat. We'll schedule something. I prefer to do things in person, but we could also do things over the mail if that's the way it has to be. Use the chat on the online school and go ahead and we'll work together. I'd love to. Thanks for asking. The next question is from Dab King. Dab King would like to know, what the best way to conserve your oxygen is. Basically, you wanna be careful to not leave your oxygen on if you're not using it. One thing that could help you would be to get a foot pedal, and that way you can easily turn on and off your oxygen as you're switching between your different flame types. I think the most important thing is that you use the correct flame for the type of work that you're using. So if you're doing some small detailed work, make sure you put in the effort to turn your flame down and use a small flame. The priority is definitely making the best glass work possible. I'd also, of course, like to recommend recommend HVO, high volume oxygen. They offer any students or anybody who mentions this video, 5% off a system. If you buy an HVO system, you're never gonna need to worry about how much oxygen you use again, because you can produce as much as you want right at home. That's what I use here, an HVO system. I've used it for years, since about 2013. It's an amazing system. I'd highly recommend that as well as a long-term goal. The next question is from Easy Crosby. They'd like to know, what's Monkey up to? For those of you guys that are new to the channel or don't follow me too closely, Monkey is the name of my cat. What he's been up to, he's amazing. So he's basically been up to sleeping. He's eating, but doesn't eat the whole dish. So you feed him and then he like asks for food and you give him food, but he doesn't really eat it, then ask for more food. So he's asking for food, he's sleeping. And his full name, for those of you guys that don't really know, is Monkey the Mouser. So once in a while he catches a mouse, but mostly he's just my roommate and lives for free and mooches off me and eats food and wants cuddles and pets. Here's a couple of snaps of Monkey. He's got his own Instagram. You're welcome to check it out, at Monkey the Mouser. Yeah, that's what Monkey's been up to. Thanks for asking. All right, you guys, but on a serious note, ask me some questions in this video. Put something in the comments. Let me know, I'm here to help you guys. This is a free format, so thank you guys so much for everyone who's asked questions, and I'm looking forward to seeing what questions you guys put in this video. All right, you guys, I'd like to let you know who the winners are for this week's video. The first person we're gonna be giving away all these pumpkins to, I poke smart. Thank you so much for checking out the videos. I hope that you get on the torch soon again, but if you need to take a break, that's fine. Life is complicated and things happen, so I hope to see you back on the torch. Either way, you can enjoy these pumpkins. Thanks so much for continuing to watch the videos. The next thing that we're gonna give away on behalf of Mountain Glass Arts to Ashley Clayville is these diamond shears. I hope that these diamond shears help you along your journey with glass and add a new tool to your collection that allows you to do a bigger variety of work. Enjoy these diamond shears. Thank you so much, Ashley, for checking out the videos. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. It was really fun working with Dobie Wan Glass. Please check out revereglass.com so I can connect with you and we can work on your glass together. Thanks for watching the videos. Thank you, Mountain Glass Arts. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks with a new one. <clears throat> What's up guys? Welcome back. Thank you so much for checking in. Yeah, the, wait a second. Wait, whoa. 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 A glass with a handle for beer. So.